Hi everybody, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks, the aging narcissist. Does the aging narcissist see themselves more clearly, empathize with those they've hurt, realize they've missed out on the deeper and richer relationships of life? Though many of you are saying no, no, no in your heads, it's not that black and white. And there are many things at play here, so hang on and I'll share with you what I've seen in the aging narcissist. Each person's journey with their own NPD will vary widely. But in my experience, people with MPD have some realizations as they age. Interestingly, for some, those realizations make their behavior even more toxic, while for others, they can actually make some small changes for the better. Before you start arguing with me, let's jump into the details of what I'm saying. NPD, like all mental disorders, exists on a spectrum from mild to severe. This range describes the number of traits they exhibit, the severity to which they exhibit them, and the level of dysfunction and destruction their MPD cre creates in their lives and the lives of those around them. Though by definition, a personality disorder is very serious, pervasive, enduring, and significantly destructive, the less severe MPD, in my experience, begins to have some interesting realizations as they age. There are certain things that happen all of, to all of us as we age, and if you think about the primary focus of the person with MPD and the realities of aging, these two do not mix well. The MPD cares about looks, power, being the focus of attention, being recognized and adored. They have a sense of that they are entitled to be the focus and center of attention. They're arrogant and they believe they're special and unique and can only be around special and unique people. They often have a pattern of serial dating and cheating where they use, abuse, and then move on. Aging entails changes in our appearance, our functionality, and overall, we're challenged to keep up with what we once were able to do really easily. As time goes on, we typically need people who care about us to take care of us while various medical realities take hold. We need surgeries, we have recovery time, and other medical procedures that render us powerless and dependent. In the early stages of aging, the narcissist will face these challenges in their sense of attractiveness, limitless power, and being the center of adoration is challenged. The being the focus of other people's envy, able to command and demand and manipulate the way, the way they always have been, and being able to take care of themselves physically is also challenged. During these changes, the narcissist often finds that their previous patterns are not, no longer working. Their long history of using and abusing others means they're often out of friends and family who put up with them. Over the years, most of the people in their lives have grown tired of their behavior and have distanced and established boundaries and either have little contact or no contact. They may even have some shallow narcissistic relationships with some people, but they're simply around to get what they can get and they'll soon find other company when the narcissist is no longer powerful and attractive. This need for others and this sense of vulnerability and powerlessness creates great discomfort for someone with NPD. Even though they feed off of others their entire lives, and in many ways they are more needy than the average person, they would be the last to recognize or admit that. So the realization of their crumbling physique and the need to have others see them in hospital gowns and take care of them is abhorrent. I, I see MPDs have vastly different reactions to this conundrum. I've seen a rare few in the milder range who come up against these new realities and realize they've ruined the relational aspects of their lives in their self-focused pursuit of money, fame, power, and beauty at the expense of anything more meaningful. They realize the family members who shun them don't really think that they're all that amazing and special and grand and all the other things they thought everyone thought of them. They realize they're seen for the empty, broken shell that they do feel inside. They have a hard time having meaningful conversation, and their deep emptiness is more apparent and more painful. But they still have no idea what to do with this, as their old ways just don't work anymore. They realize no one envies them anymore, and they have huge envy for others who are more connected and have more people who really care about them. They're sad and lost and confused. How they act about this can vary. Sometimes they try to assimilate and create pseudo-relationships doing their best to figure out how to do connection. They've learned some pseudo-empathy, meaning they realize they should feel empathy at a certain time, or they should say certain caring things and do certain caring things in order not to be set aside by their family 
or rejected by their kids or shunned by others. Some will escape into drugs, alcohol, depression, despair, and even suicide. They might threaten suicide to get everyone's attention, or they may be very serious about ending their lives as they feel so empty and so in despair. Those ones won't let anyone know they're contemplating. They just execute lethal plans to everyone's shock and horror. Some will go through cycles of trying to be better and then falling into narcissistic collapse and then try again and then fall into collapse again. These collapses can run the gamut from tears and depression to rage and violence as they attempt to navigate this completely new world and feel completely unable to succeed at it. Others will try to get their needs met with the same pressure, manipulation, cycling, love bombing and devaluation and gaslighting. When this doesn't work, they'll focus on guilt and pity. They have largely lost their physical intimidation abilities and other old manipulations don't work so well. So their focus is usually on guilt trips and trying to get others to feel sorry for them and take care of them. This cycling between being nice and pressuring with guilt will often lure the few people left in their lives to take care of them and their aging needs. Often a spouse, even an ex-spouse, and usually the adult children of a narcissist are drawn in to care for the aging narcissist. They feel guilty and sorry for the narcissist, so they put themselves aside and care for them. The thing that is crucial to realize is that the being nice is not usually a grand re revelation as much as a survival realization. It's very shallow, not indicating a significant internal shift. As they fall into the later stages of aging and illness, they will likely continue their old behaviors and emotionally exhaust and continually injure the people caring for them. Since they can still be charming to others when they want, this gaslighting adds to the exhaustion. If you've decided to care for your aging narcissist, make sure you take care of yourself and realize the damage and stress you may be causing yourself by taking on this role. And again, I'm talking about the milder narcissist. The more severe narcissists will rigidly hold on to their superficiality, their grandiosity, their delusions, their using and discarding others. Their collapses as they age can show extremes of violence or self-destruction, and they will follow through on threats towards themselves and others. As in a younger narcissist collapse, the breakdown is not a breakthrough and doesn't mean they will suddenly become kind, empathic, or caring. More likely, they will just become more sullen, more depressed, and more needy. They will still use and abuse, and they will still not be able to be in a loving reciprocal partnership or parent with any consistency. Their inability to have empathy means they will be as mean and hateful on their deathbed as they were throughout their lives. Amazingly, I've seen caring family members who set themselves aside and show up to care for these people. And even while family cares for them in their last days and hours, they won't give back an ounce of love. They will complain bitterly, no matter how hard everyone tries to make things a bit better for them. And they'll even take a parting shot. The more severe will be prone to more extreme moods of reactivity, hostility, violence, and self-destructiveness. Because they can't get away from themselves due to their diminished physical abilities, they may be more prone to isolating and indulging in extreme addictions and self-destruction. Their cycles between self-serving behavior and collapse can be more implosion than explosion with depression, self-loathing, and bitter smoldering hatred of everyone and everything. The spouses, ex-spouses, adult children, and other family who try to care for them will be emotionally brutalized for their efforts, and they need mountains of support to navigate these minefields. All of their love and care will get them nothing but grief and bitterness, rage and derision. Many family members will continue to blame themselves and not see how they are emotionally trauma bonded and manipulated into taking the blame for every bit of misery the narcissist has ever felt. In summary, if you're in a relationship with an aging narcissist, be realistic. Those with a milder end of the spectrum might soften and mellow and be marginally nice at times. They may cycle in and out of the more obnoxious iterations of their old selves, sprinkled with some moments of trying to form connectedness with you. If you're waiting for a narcissist to have a deathbed aha moment or be grateful or finally be proud of you or love you the way you wanted to be loved, you will more than likely be disappointed. If you decide to care for the aging narcissist, go in with your eyes wide open. 
knowing you're not going to get any accolades or appreciation and you've got to take really good care of yourself. If you've appreciated this video, please share it on your social media, like, subscribe, and leave a comment below with a question, suggestion for another topic, and I'll try to answer all the comments that I can. Take good care of yourselves and create for yourselves a wonderful day. I'll talk to you again soon.